نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد جزاكم الله خير for joining the class my dear may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put lots of barakah in your time May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill your du'as. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weight heavy on your scale of good deeds. Ameen. All right, my dears. How are all of you? Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you in his uh, infinite mercy. Ameen. All right. Did you learn anything yesterday? What did you learn? Punishment is due to our deeds, yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah, I, I am well too. Jazakallah khair for asking. Ghafla, you learned about Ghafla? Yes. Okay, Alhamdulillah. If you're in distress, increase in dhikr. Yes, that's very, very important. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you too, my dear. Allah has named us Muslims. Yes. So they, we don't have any other names. You know, names that people have given, names that people have divided into sects. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called, of us, called all of us Muslim. Yes, you you understood the kinds of patience, understood kind of sabr. Okay. Importance of sajda. Okay. Do not, um, you know, no, complain. Yeah, we should not have a complaining attitude. Yes. Don't be heedless. Okay. Alhamdulillah. You learned about Dawud alayhi salam. Yes. Three types of people. Mm -hmm. Intercession is only with the permission of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are here gathered together to start our Juz 18. Type 1, if you have been with me from the beginning of the journey, means from Juz 1. Oh, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept it from you all, my dears. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of you that you have been on this journey and you, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you to sit and listen to the Quran from page one and inshallah, may Allah give you a long life and good health that you're able to complete the Quran. And, you know, you, you, you know, the happiness that you will feel in the end is, you know, is beyond measure because you have heard the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from from first line to the last line and that would be amazing alhamdulillah yeah and anyone who's missing you know catch up catch up because you know the ramadan is a time where you you force yourself and you know shaitan the big shaitans are, are chained up so you have more inclination and motivation to do because you know believe me there are many many people who have not read the translation of the quran at all May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you all for whose sake you love me, my dear. Okay, let's begin. Today is a very, very important juice. You know, honestly, we can't do justice to this juice in two hours. And inshallah, I was, you know, whilst I was making the notes, I was thinking I'm going to, uh, you know, put, uh, I'm going to set together a tafsir class for Surah Noor separately because you, we cannot give justice to Surah Noor uh, in, in two hours where we're trying to cover the whole of the juice. So bear with me, be patient, and then catch up on, you know, do your own reading as well in the meantime. When I, when I tell you to do your reading uh, on certain points, then um, do the reading yourself as well. Because look, this, the point of, to, you know, the gathering that we're doing today is you're able to hear the translation, you're able to hear the brief explanation. And that's the point. It's not tafsir. Tafsir is, you know, in depth. Just join the tafsir class of Surah Yunus, Yusuf, and then you will know what I'm doing. I'm only doing five ayahs, maybe four ayahs. 
maximum when I'm rushing, I, 10 eyes. And then I cover that in hour, hour and a half. So an hour actually, and people start complaining. So, you know, the sajda tilawa, my dear, is um, if I'm reciting the Quran in Arabic, I was not reciting in Arabic, I was doing in English. Sajda tilawa is not obligatory. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it sometimes and did not do it at times. Okay, so if you if you're in a gathering, you know, if you're in if you're following an imam, you're praying in the masjid. If your imam does sajda, then you do sajda. If your imam does not do sajda, you don't do sajda. Okay. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept all our efforts, my dears. I'm going to close the chats now. Let's begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We're going to begin Surah Al Mu'minun. May Allah subhanahu wa taala allow us to deliver. And uh, allow you to understand. I mean, Ya Rabbul Alameen. The meaning of Mu'minun. Who's going to tell me the meaning of Al Mu'minun? Al is the, of course, you all are so good in Arabic. MashaAllah, you attend all the Arabic classes. Allahumma barik. Uh, so, what is Al Mu'minun? The believers. Okay, Alhamdulillah. This is a Makki surah. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون So now, this, the, the commandments on, in these um, ayahs, anyone who acts on them is going to be successful. From ayah number uh, 1 to 10, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and I'm paraphrasing the, the hadith, that anyone who acts on these 10 ayahs, then, you know, they will be entitled for Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of them. Qad aflah al-mu'minun. Qad is the word meaning certainly. Certainly, uh, meaning it has happened. Why it has happened? Meaning it is so sure, for sure it will happen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, but indeed they have, you know, they have been successful. So it's as if it has happened. Um, and who are the ones who are successful? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ who, Those who are humbly submissive, who have khushu in their salah. So what is khushu and how to attain khushu? Khushu is when your heart and your body have a connection. Yeah. And, you know, when you, what, what you're, you're doing sajda, you're doing ruku, you're doing qiyam, your heart is with it. It's not that you're thinking of something that you've lost or you're thinking, okay, what's my next appointment? Or you're not thinking about something, you know, shaitan does not remind you uh, of something um, else. So that's when you when you've attained khushu in your salah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to uh, be able to have khushu in our salah. Yes, it is a Makki surah, my dear. And all the, you know, the thoughts and the whispers are from the shaitan. And, you know, we have to force ourselves. We have to train ourselves that we are not going to be thinking. We're not going to be thinking. And if it gets too much, the drive, you know, the sorry, if the whispers get too much, then what you're going to do is, or, you know, just like when you see a bad dream, um, you dry spit on the left three times. Yeah? So that way, shaitan is not going to come and, and, and start talking to you and whispering to you. Also, important thing is, learn the meanings of what you're saying. Now, alhamdulillah, I think, and I hope if you've been with me from the beginning, um, that you understood the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. And I'm sure you must have, your salah has gone to another level after you understood that Surah Al-Fatiha is a conversation uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, is having with, with you. So each one of us. So yeah, I'm sure. So you see how it impacted that you understood something and, um, and, and how you, it's changed, changed your perspective. Similarly, try to understand the meanings of the, the surahs that you're reading, of the tasbih that you're doing in ruku and sujood. So then it will keep you focused. So a, an action point for you, uh, something to do is that you need to, you, I'm going to learn the meaning of the words in salah that I say. Yeah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us kushu. 
And, you know, subhanAllah, when you hear about the Sahaba and, you know, when they had to, for example, at that time, there was no anesthetics. So if they had to get an amputation done because of some, you know, pus that has been, that had developed, they would say, let me stand in prayer. And when they would stand in prayer, the, uh, then the person who was treating them would chop the leg off, amputate the leg, and they would not feel the pain. Imagine the level, imagine their connection, subhanAllah. You know, I wish we can get even a quarter of that. May Allah allow us. So you see, condition for entering Jannah and Jannatul Firdaus, number one, Hushu in Salah. So let's make dua that Ya Rab, allow us to develop Hushu in, uh, in our Salah and we can only do it with your Tawfiq. By the way, if I ask you, what is the meaning of success? What would you tell me? I'm not talking about dunya terms. What have you learned up till now in the Quran? What has, you know, what has caught your mind? What is success? I'm waiting for answers. Yes, Jazakallah khair. That you are able to enter Jannah and, is it just entering Jannah? Is it just entering Jannah? And free from the fire. Yeah, so you are not even going to spend a second in the fire. And the, uh, and you are going to be given the glad tiding. Y yes, you, you'll be able to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah allow us to be that. All right. The next quality is, and they who turn away from ill speech. Love. I want you to underline what is love. Love is useless talk, number one. Number two is anything that has no goodness in dunya. It's of no benefit in, in the world. Number three, no benefit in the hereafter. Yeah. And number four is, you know, you don't think what you're saying and you're just saying for the sake of saying. That is love. So these type of people are not going to talk and, and, and be involved in vain speech. Okay. And can you give me some examples very quickly? Anything? Some, yeah, watching TV, gossiping, yes, backbiting, may Allah protect us. Games, yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, social media, good. That is a lot of waste of time, honestly, that is love. Mocking, yeah. So anything that has no goodness in the politics, true, true, I agree with you. Jazakumullah, talking about celebrity, honestly. I don't know why we give them so much time and importance. They're making, they are making money because you talk about them, because you see them so much and you want to know about the news. And hence they are making money and you're losing an important uh, element of your life, which is your time. Okay. So may Allah protect us from love. Then they are those who are observant of zakah and they are those who guard their private parts, except from their wives or those their right hands possess, for indeed they will not be blamed. But whosoever seeks beyond that, they are the transgressors. They are who, they are who they who are to their trusts and promises attentive, meaning they are very diligent in their in their trust. If anybody has um, given them trust, they will make sure that they make up the trust. Now, I did not pay much attention on zakah because we've covered zakah with zakah already. Uh, in terms of guide, gu guarding the private parts, meaning they don't do any any haram of any sexual nature. They don't do any fornication. They, they're not involved in any homosexuality. So anything which is uh, haram, uh, in, in which falls in the category of haram sexual pleasure, then they don't involve in that. And of course, they, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing us to, what it means by right hand possess, you know, at the time, now it is not because slavery is not abolished now. We don't have slavery now. They were allowed to have, um, you know, sexual contact with their um, slaves, the slave girls. Okay. So they were not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not hold them at account for that. They were allowed to do that. But now, no. And, but yes, we are allowed to do with, you know, whatever you want to do within the halal uh, means with your spouses. So these people, they guard their private parts except from their spouses. So now um, what their right hands possess is no more. And anyone who breaks the law, Allah subhanahu wa call, ta'ala calls them transgressors. Underline that. Yeah. Who is a transgressor? 
anything, any law that they break that leads to fornication. Any law that they break, which leads to fornication, haram, yeah? Then that is, they are transgressing. And uh, and who are, uh, and they are, they who are to their trusts and their promises attentive, meaning, you know, if somebody entrusts them with something, they don't say, I lost it. I don't know where it is. Yeah, they don't deny it. And whatever promises they make, they make sure they uh, fulfill the promises. Now, how do, what is trust? Yeah, uh, you know, for example, you're working somewhere, you're going to college, you're going to school. You're a teacher or you work in a, you're, you're a, you know, working as an IT, IT consultant anywhere. Now you go and they give you some pens to write, to make a report or to sign something. And you just walk away with the pen that was meant to be for your workplace. Then, you know, what did you do? They trusted you with their stationery. You did not return it. Or you know you you everybody in your house you know they know they can ask you to get their printing done so they have you know a, a hundred page booklet that they need printing they will ask you can you please get it printed for me and you and the and the your workplace has allowed you a certain amount of printing for which is going to help that company that organization right they did not say it's for personal use if they did not say it's not it's not for personal use and you use it what did you do you broke the trust Okay, be careful. And uh, also, for example, you know, um, you are working, right? And they give you breaks in between. But what do you do? You go for a longer break. They, they give you 15 minutes break and they you went for an hour break and you come back. What did you do? You broke the trust. Okay. Um, there was a trust. There's a contract between you and them. And that's your working hours. This is your break time hours. So what... You know, yes, slacking in your job or when you're working, you're constantly checking your phone, right? That's not meant to be. They didn't ask you. They're not paying you for, you know, you being on social media. They're paying you to do what your job is. You know, if they allow you, that's another thing. I'm sure no one allows that. So be careful. You know, sometimes we read things in the Quran and we just move on. We don't realize that how can it how can we apply it in our lives you know we always thought trust is something you know someone is going to give me some piece of gold and i'm going to keep it no anything that you do you have to be making sure for example you're contracted to work you know um, nine to five job what do you do you just you know you have friends in places so you just leave a three and you say you know please mark me when i'm going out you know sign me out what did you do you did not fulfill the trust Okay. Also, our children are our trust. Yeah. If you are, you know, you're a teacher, you're working, the, your students are a trust to, to you. So you need to do a good job to fulfill the trust. You need to teach them properly. Like, for example, you're coming here. And if I'm not going to prepare and I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to just say, okay, it, it's easy. I'm going to say whatever is in my mind. Then what's going to happen? Did I fulfill the trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed me with? I have to do to the best of my ability so you can benefit because there's a trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on me that Allah gave me this place so that I can tell you certain things. Do you see? So each one of us is responsible for someone who is beneath us. So be careful. You know, um, you know, with your children, be careful that what you're doing with them. Don't, don't take out all your frustration on your children. Teach them nice things. Teach them good things because that is a trust Allah has given you, given your children to you as an amana. Yeah, they are not your children. You don't own them. Similarly, your body is a trust. Yeah, so be careful what you eat. You know, don't put haram things in your body. They have a huge impact. Believe me, up till now, you must have heard so many times that eat from the pure, eat from the pure. Even the prophets are being asked to eat from the pure. So what you put in your body is so important. And do not, you know, betray the trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you by eating things so that, you know, you, you make yourself sick. 
and then you're not able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're not able to end Jannah because you are in bed, you're in hospital, you're suffering from diseases because you could not give up your desire of eating this and that and harming your body. Be it by eating junk food, be it by smoking, be it by taking drugs, be it by vaping, whatever you're doing. You are harming yourself, but you, it, that, that means you're not fulfilling the trust. Okay? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said um, about trust and wa'ahdihim. Wa'ahdihim, ahd is, you know, something that we take it on ourselves, our own, our own self. For example, you know, um, you, you sign a tenancy agreement. So you've taken a contract. Yeah, you've taken, I'm going to buy, abide by certain rules and regulations. Okay, you enter into a nikah, you do a nikah, that's a contract where you honor each other, you love each other, you're going to, you know, guard each other's uh, private lives, you're not going to expose each other, so that, and you're going to look after each other. So this is a contract you have done, ahad. so you are the one who is going to fulfill that promise that you have done. Yeah, so when you say, that, you know, I'm going to do this for you, make sure you do it for that person because then that is something that you have, you know, put it on yourself by saying, you uh, you can protect by yourself by saying, okay, I'll try my best. If I'm not able to, then please forgive me. But don't say I'm definitely going to do it, okay? Don't make it hard on yourself if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made it hard. And alhamdulillah, I'm sure by now, all of you have now got enough knowledge of Islam that you're not going to say, Ya Allah, if I pass my exam, I'm going to offer 100, 100 rakah or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You know, some people say, Allah, if, I, if you give me a child, I'm going to, you know, feed a thousand people. And then you don't have money to feed a thousand people, but you've promised now you have to keep fulfill your promise. Otherwise, if you're going to break the promise, then you have to go through all the, the, the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, the penalties that you have to pay the penalty. So don't be hard on yourself. Whatever is written for you is going to happen. And if you are going to promise someone, then you tell them that I'm going to make sure I do to the best of my ability. Okay, ayah number nine, and those who, who carefully maintain their prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ Underline, يُحَافِظُونَ So you see, salah is coming again, second time. Meaning, they protect it. How do they protect it? They don't lose the salah by praying on time. They make sure they're doing wudu properly. When they are praying, they are not pecking like a hen. They are taking their time in their recitation. And I'm not saying go in, you know, in a slow motion, but you know, you're giving time and you're praying with full concentration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of that. So you're, you're guarding your salah by making sure that all, you know, you're doing ruku properly, you're doing sujood properly, you're sitting in tashahud properly. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those are the inheritors, meaning they own it. What do they own? Who will inherit al-firdaus, subhanallah. And remember I told you that firdaus is the highest level of paradise, the, the roof of which is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the springs of Jannah come from Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, allow uh, us to enter Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you ask for Jannah, ask for Jannatul Firdaus. And then Allah says, they will abide therein eternally. Um, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no one among you who does not have two abodes, meaning two places to stay. Meaning every person has a fixed place, to fixed seat in two places. Listen to this, one place in Jannah and another place in the hell. If he dies and enters hell, then the people of Jannah will inherit his abode. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. They are the inheritors. Meaning, look, we are, our original destination was Jannah, right? Shaitan whispered into the years of Adam and Hawa alayhi salam. And as a result, we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to leave Jannah and, and said that you need to go on earth and for a certain time and then everyone's going to be back. So meaning all of us have a house in Jannah and a house in the hellfire. Now, if, you know, like dunya, if someone has a house and they die, what happens? The, in, the heirs will inherit the house. So what happens is that if we have worked, may Allah protect us for a house in the hellfire, then what's going to happen to the house in Jannah? Your heirs are going to take it. 
So may Allah allow us to enter Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, allow, give us the ability to do deeds that he is happy with us. Allah mani as'aluk al-Jannah. Allah mani as'aluk al-Jannah. Allah mani as'aluk al-Jannah. And we certainly, and certainly did we create man from an extract of clay. Now, remember, we've done this yesterday as well. So our origin started from a clay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we placed him a, as a sperm drop in a firm lodging. What is a firm lodging? Meaning the womb of the mother. And then we made the spray, a sperm drop into a clinging cloth and we made the cloth into a lump of flesh and we made from the lump bones and we covered the bones with the flesh and we developed him into a, another creation. You see, and between... Um, between uh, each stage, uh, there is a difference of how many days? 40 days. And at 120 days, the angel comes and blows the, um, uh, the, the soul into it. Okay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 15. In ayah 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, no, but I, I did not come. Sorry, I beg your pardon. I did not complete. And we developed them into another creation. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed the blessed and the best of the creators. And, and the question is, is there anyone who can create other than Allah? And how beautiful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation that in the darkness of the womb, how perfectly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places the, the organs in the right place, the eyes, the, where the eyes are meant to be, the nose where it's meant to be, can even today in science, as much as science has developed, how they may, are they able to develop something that is so perfect and so beautiful uh, in, in complete darkness? They can't. Then indeed, after that, you are to die. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you life. Now you're going to die. You know, if, for us, if we ponder over two things, uh, if we ponder over the birth and the death, it is enough to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner, the sole creator. Isn't that so? Does any Has anyone got control over birth? You know, without Allah's permission, can anybody give birth? Without Allah's permission, can anyone give death? You know, whom Allah wants to live, they live. And with the, with the decree of Allah, the person is able to kill. Other than that, no. And then, indeed, you on the day of resurrection will be resurrected. And we have created above you seven layered heavens and never uh, have we been of our creation unaware. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never neglected his creation for a moment. And you see, we know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nurtures every single creation of it. Every single creation, you name it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nurtures it. From the sun, from the moon, from the stars, you know, from the galaxy, from the creation, from the microorganisms. But, you know, our mind will boggle. We will not be able to understand. And, um, you know, subhanallah, you know, I and you even cannot comprehend you know, we, you know, if, we, if we've been asked to do five or four tasks, we just panic. And we start getting panic attacks that how am I going to do it? And uh, of course, Allah is far and above and beyond the creation. But what I'm trying to say is, then we understand how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, everything happening in dunya is with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the sun sets, does such that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you know when you're seeing sun setting, it goes and does such that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next day, it asks Allah's permission if it can continue. Meaning, it asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should I rise, Ya Rabb? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it to rise. But there will come a day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, no, don't rise from the east today, rise from the west. And that is going to be the day of judgment. Then ayah 18, and we have sent down rain from the sky in a measured amount. And we have settled it in earth. You see how subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the, the, if the rain is not in measured amount, what's going to happen? Floods. Yeah. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stores the water in enough quantity that it does not become, you know, the, the water is able, the soil is able to absorb it. And then the plants are going to nourish out of it. Everything happening in perfect harmony and perfect order. And we brought forth for you thereby gardens of palm trees and grape wines, in which you are 
abundant um, fruits and from which you eat, in which for you are abundant fruits and from which you eat. And so, subhanAllah, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again enlightening us with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And all coming from water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending rain. As a result of the rain, we are able to have fruits and we are able to eat them. And some of us are farmers. They sell them. They're making money from them. Yeah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the whole earth, this entire earth is for our benefit. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we brought forth a tree issuing from Mount Sinai, meaning originally this tree is from there, which produces oil and food for those who eat. And which tree is this? The olive tree. Yeah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, season your food with olive oil and, and you know, anoint yourself, mean massage yourself with it, for it comes from a blessed tree. Meaning, oil is not only good for eating, but it's also good for application. And I'm sure all of you are doing it anyway. You're including olive oil in your diet. And you see how now the Western, you know, people, they're waking up and they're saying, oh, honey has benefits. Oh, olive oil is so good for you. Dates are good for you. And us Muslims, we're not interested. You know, some of us, our children, you know, especially children living in the West, they're not interested in eating, in eating olives. You know, they, if it's on the pizza topping, they'll take it off. But look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it is blessed. The oil is blessed, blessed, the food is blessed, and it is good for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand. Ayah 21, um, indeed for you in livestock is a lesson. When we give you drink from that which is in their bellies and from you in, in them are numerous benefits for, uh, and from them you eat. So again, blessings are being mentioned. Why? So that we understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And upon them uh, and upon them and on ships you are carried, meaning either you ride on camels or you ride on ships. And this was at the time. Now, alhamdulillah, we've been given planes and we've been given cars and all modes of transportation. And we need to say alhamdulillah for that. And we had certainly sent no to his people. And he said, oh, my people worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. And, they, and then will you not fear him? But the eminent ones among those among those who disbelieve from his people, this is, they said, this is not but a man like yourselves who wishes to take precedence over you. Now, this is a, so, um, a, a story that you know. So I'm just going to quickly go over it okay and if Allah had will to send a messenger he would have sent down angels and we have not heard from, of this from our forefathers you see how they were accusing him and now they want an angel to be sent he is not but a man possessed with madness so wait concerning him for a while he he is not but a man so wait concerning him for a, for a while Nuh salam said oh my lord now can you please underline this duha for yourself yeah, yeah, Allah, support me because they have denied me. Highlight this one. Anytime you feel overpowered by pe people, anytime that people are just, you know, getting on your nerves, the best thing is don't argue with them. You're only going to waste your energy. And instead, start speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And, and, you, and after how many years did he say that? 950 years. He's saying, Ya Allah, my people have denied me after trying for 950 years. So Allah subhanahu wa says, we inspired to him, construct the ship under our observation and our inspiration. And when our command comes and the oven overflows, because that was a sign. Yeah, that was a sign. How would he know they, they were living in a desert? How would he know that, you know, what's going to happen? Where's the water coming from? So there was an oven, you know, the oven that's used for, um, you know, where the bakers have the, the one in the, they make it like a pit. And uh, you get the, the bread baked in that oven. So that that were not normal ovens, not like our ovens. Okay, the one that's made of clay, and then the men have to bend down and they uh, they put the bread there. So the water was meant to flow from that oven. Okay, the water is going to start gushing forth, and then you will know that the the punishment has started. So when our command comes and the oven overflows, put in the ship from each creature, two mates of and your family. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, um, two people of each kind and two, and we know two animals, except those for whom the decree of destruction has uh, proceeded. And we know now that it was Luther and, and Nuh alayhi salam's wife and his son who did not obey and who did not believe. 
And Allah says, do not address me concerning those who have wronged. Indeed, they are to be drowned. And when you have boarded the ship, um, uh, you and those with you say, Alhamdulillah, min al al Say praise to Allah who saved us from the wrongdoing people. Meaning, when you get on there, make sure that you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there's another dua, ayah 29, if you can underline. This dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Nuh to say, So, O oh my Lord, let me land at a blessed landing place and you are best to accommodate. So any time when you're traveling, um, you know, for work, when you're going to work, so, and then, um, you know, Make sure you make this dua so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in it. Any time where you, where you feel that the future is uncertain, then that's what you're going to do. Okay? And you are the best to accommodate us. Inna fi dhalika la ayati wa inna kunna la mubtaleen. Indeed, the, the, in that are signs and indeed we are ever testing. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. So what do we know? That life is a test. You need to understand now in this journey of Quran, you must have come across and you have put, I'm sure you've put your heart to rest, that life is going to be a test. You know, any one of us who says my life is a bed of roses, they are lying. You know, they, um, they maybe, maybe then they are of those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, let go. That you can, if you see them persisting in sins and they are being blessed with everything, then that is a test for them. But mind you, blessings are a test as well. So we are being told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, testing us. Then we produce after them a generation of others. And we sent among them a messenger from themselves saying, worship Allah, you have no deity other than him, and then will you not fear him? Meaning, are you still going to disobey Allah and the eminent among his people who disbelieved and denied the meeting of the hereafter while we have we had given them luxury in the worldly life? And they said, this is not but a man like you. Meaning, time, people changed. The people who were rescued, they were believers, their generations, people forgot. And then messengers were sent. And then again, the same old story. The people did not believe. They said, it's all made up stories. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that, you know, these people used to say, he's just a man. I mean, they were expecting a, a, an angel. How can you expect an angel? How can he, an angel be a role model for you? And they used to say, he eats of that from which you eat and drinks from what you drink. Meaning, what's so special about him that he's a messenger? And if he should, I number 34, uh, and, if he, um, uh, and if you should obey a man like yourselves, indeed, you would be a loser. Meaning, we know that... We, People are not going to listen. There's going to be a handful of people who are going to be on the right path. Does he promise you that when, that when you have died and become dust and bones, that you will be brought forth once more? Again, they have a problem with resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, they said, how far? How far is that which you are promised? Meaning it's impossible. It's impossible. There's no day of judgment. There's nothing. This is just life. They, they said life is, is not but our worldly life, meaning we die and, uh, and we live, but we will not be resurrected. Uh, I am 38. He is not but a man who has invented a lie about Allah and you will not believe him. So you see how prophets were denied. And I'm sure you all understand you're with me. And then again, and, and he said, oh, my Lord, support me because they have denied me. I've done my best to convey the message, but these people are not believing. You help me. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, after a little, they will surely become regretful. Meaning, there's a time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives time to people. And uh, after after the time has passed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the shriek sees them in truth, and we made them as a plant stubble. Meaning, you know, what is a plant stubble? Meaning, you know, scattered leaves. So, you know, weeds that have been uprooted and just cut off and then thrown aside. And then away with the wrongdoing people. Now here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not giving names of who they are. But the point is, the important message is being put across. That when people are going to deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs. And when, Allah, when people are going to deny the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to destroy and bring another set of people.
Okay, so the, these are stories of generations, people who rejected the blessings of Allah and uh, they did not follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says in ayah 42, then we produced after them other generations. No nation will precede its time of termination, nor will they remain thereafter. Then we sent our messengers in succession. Yeah. Every time there came to a nation, its messenger, they denied him. So we made them follow one another in destruction and we made them narrations, meaning they are just stories now. And so away with the people who do not believe. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, the story of Musa. Then we sent Musa and his brother Harun with our signs and a clear authority to Fir'aun and his establishment, but they were arrogant. They were haughty people, meaning they thought they, they were full of themselves, basically. They uh, said, should we believe two men like ourselves while their people are for us in servitude, meaning their people, they're from Bani Israel, they're servants to us. And how are we going to listen to the people from this, from this, you know, they are very proud of their lineage, basically. So they denied them um, and they were of those who were destroyed. And we certainly gave Musa uh, the scripture that perhaps they would be guided, meaning who the Bani Israel, that they would read the book and they would reflect on the meanings, they would understand and implement and follow. And we made the son um, of Maryam, Isa alayhi salam, and his mother a sign, and we sheltered them in, in them with the high ground, having level areas of flowing water, meaning. Where Isa alayhi salam and Maryam alayhi salam would stay, there was, there was a special place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had flowing water for them and huge blessings. You see, how many times do we take our blessings for granted? You know, with whatever situation is happening in Palestine, how many of you, every time you drank a clean glass of water, did you thank Allah for that? How many times are you sitting on your iftar table and thanking Allah for all the blessings? Because, you know, I saw... Last I saw was one woman, she was crying and she had grass in front of her and, and she was an elderly woman. And she said, this is all I have got to eat. Ya Allah, are we not going to be questioned? Are we not going to be questioned? We are going to be questioned that, you know, what, we do, what did we do with the blessings that we were given? And, you know, just few, how many months ago, before October, did they even think, yes, they were living a terrible life, no doubt, but did, did they even think this is, this is going to come to them? So we never should be, you know, secure from, you know, what is going to come our way. You know, we need to make sure whatever we are, you know, time we are in, make sure you're thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that you have, the health that you have. The, you know, the abilities that you have, the skills that you have, make sure you, you, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah 51 says, O messengers, eat. And so Allah is addressing the messengers. O messengers, eat from good foods and work righteous, work righteousness, underline. Where do I and you stand honestly? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the messengers, eat kulu min tayyibati wa amalu saliha. That you, already there are people who have not done any sin and they are being told that make sure you eat from the pure, eat from the pure and good foods. Subhanallah. Indeed, I of what you do am knowing. Uh, and then indeed, and indeed, this your religion is the religion and your Lord, so fear me. But the people divided their religion among them in sects, each, fas each faction in what it has, uh, re it has rejoicing. Isn't it that so? Yeah, that people, you know, people have called themselves, I am this and I am that and I am that. And, you know, they are not focused on the religion. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hum, leave them. Meaning people who are stubborn in their divisions, leave them. Yeah, leave them in their confusion for a time. Meaning, don't fret about it too much. Do they think that what we extend to them of wealth and children is because we hasten for them good doing, good things? Rather, they do not perceive. Underline this, please. Yeah. You know, and, and I've said that time, time again, that if someone is doing something wrong, they are clearly sinning. They never pray. They never fast in Ramadan. They do not give zakah. They are not kind people. And you still see that, you know, they are getting all the so-called blessings of dunya. They are you know, flourishing according to the standards of dunya. Don't be fooled. That's just temporary. Okay. 
and uh, indeed they are uh, and they are who they who are apprehensive from their uh, uh, from fear of their lord and they who believe in the signs of their lord and they uh, who associate uh, who do not associate anything with their lord and they who give what they uh, what they give while their hearts are fearful because they will be returning to their lord lord it is those who hasten to good deeds and they outstrip others therein so first allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about those people who are disobedient people who think that you know they are given the worldly pleasures so they are allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with them but actually allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them time and you know they are going to be seized suddenly and in from ayah 57 onwards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about some amazing people and what are their qualities you know they are those who believe in the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't do shirk and you know even after doing good deeds they don't become uh, arrogant about their good deeds their hearts are, are, are trembling because they don't know if their good deeds are going to be accepted you see after anything good you do write down an action point that you're going to say ya rab accept it from me and we learn from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? When he made, he and Ismail alayhi salam, he made the Kaaba. What did they say? Rabbana taqabbal minna. So, you know, always, even when you're sitting in this class and you're in the class and say, Ya Rab, accept it from me. And so, you know, because we don't know. If we, we do a mountain of good deeds, we, according to us, we've done it, but will it be accepted? Or will it be turned to dust? May Allah protect us. So, and what else? What is their quality? They, I-61, it is those who hasten to good deeds. So they are fearful. Once they do good deeds, they don't know if they're going to be accepted. Then they, you know, any opportunity to do good, they don't delay it. And they go ahead of one another in performing good deeds. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people uh, who are, uh, who hasten towards good deeds I mean, and we charge no soul except, and we charge no soul uh, except with that, within its capacity, and with us is a record which speaks with truth, and they will not be wronged. Meaning, our book of deeds will speak of our intentions and our deeds. Our book of deeds is going to speak, you know, we can say, I did this, you know, and I did that, but did I really? Did I really mean it from my heart or did I just say it or did it so that people call me pious? May Allah protect us. But their hearts are covered with confusion over this um, and they will have evil deeds beside this, besides this belief which they are doing. So those people who have, uh, you know, who did deeds and they, you know, um, and their intentions were not right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you know, that there are people who don't take, um, you know, the matter of deeds being recorded seriously. Yeah. Then what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that, you know, why is that? Because they are confused. And, um, you know, they think sin, sins are insignificant. So make sure that, you know, anytime you do wrong, do, do not say it's only a minor sin. You know, some people say, okay, at least I'm not doing major sins. You know, because minor sins accumulate to become major sins. So be careful of that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, until we seize them, until we seize their affluent ones with punishment at once, while they're crying to Allah for help. So it is, the punishment starts from the affluent people. So do not cry out today. Indeed, by us, you will not be helped. So now when the when the punishment ceases, remember Fir'aun when he was dying, suddenly he says, I believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. So, but no, the, at that time, once you've seen the angels of death, you can, the Toba is not accepted. So now when the time of the punishment, they're saying, no, no, no. You know, they start crying and they, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you're not going to be held today. Why? Because I number 66, my verses had already been recited to you, but you were turning back on your heels meaning you were not listening. And why were you not listening? In arrogance and conversing by night, speaking evil. And so, you you know, you were arrogant about the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, sometimes people, they mock uh, the religion of Islam. They mock the sunnah. Yeah, which is, it, it is not allowed. Ayah 68 
then have they not reflected over the Quran? Or has there come to them that which have uh, which had not come to their forefathers? Underline this. It is for all of us. Ayah number 68. Afalam have they not reflect? I, I mean, قول is the Quran. Okay, we need to reflect on the Quran. So when you're listening, once you're listening attentively and you're paying attention and you're reflecting on the ayahs and then you're saying Alhamdulillah for the blessings. And you, whenever Jannah, topic of Jannah comes and good people comes, you're making dua. Ya Allah, make me of them. And when the people are, are, are punishment, is, is, uh, ayat are speaking about the people who are evil and the ayat of punishment of the hellfire, then at the same, in the same breath, you're making Ya Allah, protect me from the fire. So, or did they, or did they not know their messenger? So they were, they are out towards him, uh, disacknowledging. Meaning, the messenger has grown up in front of them. They know him as a person. Then how come they don't trust him? Or do they say in him is madness? Rather, he brought them the truth. But most of, um, but most of them to the truth are averse. Meaning, they cannot see the truth. But if the truth had followed their inclination, the heavens and the earth and who. Whoever is in them would have been ruined. Meaning, if their, you know, if, if their desires were to be followed, nothing would remain. Everything would have destroyed. Rather, we have brought them their message, but they, from their message, are turning away. So you ask them for payment. And it's a question. You ask them for a payment, but the but the reward of your Lord is best, and He is the best of the uh, providers. Meaning, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they are be, is being told, you know, they reject you, ya Rasulullah. So then, but you don't even ask them for any benefit from it. Um, you know, it is Allah, you you seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So those people who uh, don't ask money for Deen, you know, are on are following the path of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, and the prophets before him. And you know, you, you, and your heart puts it, your heart is at ease that they are on the right track. But don't be confused, you know, that people are gonna say, oh, I teach Quran and I'm char charging money. But you don't charge, you know, a lot of money. But if you're charging for your time, which is, you know, it's best you do it with free of charge. And you have to have a skill and you work from that skill and you try and earn money from that and try and, and try and um, benefit the deen in, in the best way you can, where your uh, finance is not, you know, financial interest is not associated. And indeed, you invite them to a straight path, but indeed, those who do not believe in the hereafter are deviating from the, from the path. Meaning, even if they see the truth, they don't want to follow it. Yeah, they don't want, they don't want to adopt the right path. They don't, they're not interested in Jannah. All they're interested is, is this worldly life. And even if we gave them mercy and remove them and remove what was upon them of affliction, they would persist in their transgression, wandering blindly. And we had gripped them with suffering as a warning, but they did not yield to their Lord, nor did they humbly supplicate and, and will continue thus until when we have opened for them a door of severe punishment. Immediately will they will be there in despair, you know, so. What do we learn from this? That when we are going through difficulties in our lives, may Allah make it easy, we need to humble ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know, we, we don't need to say, oh, why is, it thing, why is this thing happening to me? You know, why does it only happen to me? Why do bad things happen for me? Now you're not gonna use the word bad. Why? Because something that you perceive is bad in the bigger picture, it may be better for you. Okay, you can tell, yes, I, I, Ya Rab, give me the uh, wisdom to understand, or, uh, and Ya Allah, give me sabr, ask Allah for sabr, sabr. So, you know, when we're going through a difficult time, uh, we need to humble ourselves. And we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to increase in our dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are people, you know, they don't use their minds. It is, yeah, and they, you know, they, they don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why don't they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In Ayah 78, Allah says, it is he who produced for you hearing and vision and hearts 
and little are you grateful, meaning the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you senses and you don't use them and, and you become ungrateful. So, you know, ask yourself, are you using your eyes, your ears, your sense of uh, understanding, you, 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 you being able to speak, are you using them to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some way? Yeah. So make sure that, you know, you are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them as a trust to you. You use them properly and you, you use them as a way to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is going to be your gratitude. I 79, and it is he who has multiplied you throughout the earth and to him you will be gathered. This is important. That we remember that we are going to be gathered in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever we do, we're going to see it on the day of judgment. It, and it is he who gives life and causes death. And in, in his is the alternation of the night and the, and the day. Then will you not reason? Rather, they say what the former people said. They said, when we have died and become dust and bones, are we indeed to be resurrected? All of them, same words same sentences you see people don't change honestly we think we are living in a progressive world we think we're living in a developed world i think people are, have always been the same yeah look how they you know the the evil people all the same language same they look down they are racist they look down they you know they look down on certain people and they think of themselves as you know mighty and the best so and but have you ever thought why this happens why that the language is the same why they are arrogant why they are hard hearted can you think can anyone tell me why why is it the same anyone passes yeah but why 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 pride yes mm -hmm. but I want to know the reason. Let me see who is the intelligent one. I'm looking for an answer. Mm -hmm. Love of the near, but why? Why is there love? Heedless, but why did the heedless come? come? Jazakallah khair, sister Um Hamza. Well done. It is a trick of the shaitan. Jazakallah khair. You got the prize. Uh, yeah, so it is shaitan. Because look, shaitan has been there from a time of Adam alayhi salam, and he's been, been there before Adam as well. He knows people. And he knows how to manipulate them. Yeah. So shaitan is there all the time. So he is the one who whispers into their ears all these things. So what should we say? Yeah. So shaitan is there. And we have, I-83, I we have been promised this. Uh, and we and our forefathers before, this is not but legends of the former people. Meaning centuries have gone, people have been talking that, you know, date of judgment is coming. Why has it still arrived? So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to whom, to whom belongs the earth and whoever is in it, if you should know, they will say to Allah, they say, will, then will you not remember? Say, who is, your, who is the Lord of the seven, uh, seven heavens and the Lord of the great throne? They will say they belong to Allah. Then they will then say, will then will you not fear him? Meaning, are you not going to ponder over over it? Say, in whose hand is the realm of all things? He protects while none can protect against him. If you should know, they will say, all belongs to Allah. Say, then how are you deluded? Rather, we have brought them the truth, and indeed they are liars. Meaning, they acknowledge. Do you know, Tawheed has three. There is three parts to Tawheed. Tawheed Rububiya, Uluhiya, and Tawheed Asma'u Sifat. They used to believe that Allah has, you know, is the creator, the sustainer, and, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you, you can see is the, he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. But where did they go wrong? They went wrong in Uluhiya. That the Allah has the sole right to be worshipped only. They started getting associates. They made into you know they made partners with Allah and that is why you know your iman is not complete if you don't have you don't understand and you don't give Allah the exclusive right to worship okay and then Allah's ayah 91 Allah has not taken any son nor has there ever been with him any deity if there had been then each deity would have 
taken what it created and some of them would have sought to overcome others. You know, they would always have, if there would have been many deities, they would have been power struggle. You know, like the Hindu stories, if you were if you were to read about their Hindu stories, the their, their religion, they say one God had a fight with another God. Subhanallah, how can God, you know, God is all powerful, Allah alone. There is only one God. Otherwise, if there were many deities, there would have been chaos. Exalted is Allah above what they describe concerning him, meaning Allah is the only creator. And in, in, in the, the harmony on this earth, in this whole system, in earth and beyond, in the universe is because Allah is only one. And um, he is the knower of the unseen and witnessed and the witness so high is he above what they associate with him. Say, O Prophet, وسلم, my Lord, if you should show me that which they promised, meaning, you know, Nabi this is a Makki surah, so Nabi وسلم, is in Mecca, and these people are refusing to believe, like, you know, uh, yeah, like in the past, people of Nuh السلام, and Lut السلام, used to disbelieve. So, you know, and Nabi وسلم, knows that, you know, the pre previous stations were destroyed with the punishment. So Nabi Sallallahu was apprehensive uh, about it. So he, he's saying, my Lord, if you should show me punishment, which they are promised, meaning it happens in my life, then, then he's making dua, my Lord, then do not place me among the wrongdoing people. Meaning take me away from them. If there is a punishment going to come, then take me away. And indeed we are able to show you what we have promised them. Um, repel by means of, uh, of what is best in, in their evil, we are most knowing of what they describe. Right, underline this. 96. Repel evil with good. Yeah, what are we, what is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being told to do and that is for us to do? That your reaction you to their action has to be ahsan, good. Okay. Don't cut off families. Don't cut off relations. You continue being good. You say something nice. Okay. This is important. It is going to be difficult. You're going to say uh, it's easier said than done, no doubt. Then you need to remind yourself it's just not going to be easy. It's never going to be easy. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on to say in ayah 90, uh, before that, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Nahnu a'lamu bima yasifun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah knows what the people are doing. So we take consolation now. This was being told to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now for us, when people are doing bad and you're, you're feeling sad about it, you continue being, being kind. Don't stoop down to their level. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Allah knows, have those private conversations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let shaitan come in between and you start arguing and you start screaming and you start shouting and then you become the same as them. You're no different. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us a beautiful dua, underline this dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught his messenger and now we have to learn it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ حَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ so you're going to start from Rabbi Aoudhu Bika Min Hamazati Shayateen. Oh my Lord, see, uh, I seek refuge in you from the incitements of the devils. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, like when the shaitan is whispering. So you say, you know, shaitan is saying, you know, you are better than this. Why are they saying this to you? You know, you you should, you know, reply. You you also know. Show them you're not a coward. Don't don't come into these traps. Okay, so start reading this dua. Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'udhu bika rabbi an yahdurun. And I seek refuge in you, my Lord, lest they may be present with me. Meaning, I don't want shaitan to be present near me. Uh, because if he is going to be present, he is going to whisper into my ears. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And, and when death comes to them, one of them says, my Lord, send me back. Subhanallah. You see, when this be, this person, you know, has um, done all things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now he's saying, my Lord, send me back. Why? So that I may do righteousness in that which I have left behind. Meaning, this person then realizes 
that, you know, what have I, what was I earning? What did I do? He realizes all those mistakes and he asks for an opportunity to be returned. No, it is the only, it is only a word he's saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying he's lying. And behind them is a barrier until the day they are resurrected. The barrier is barzakh. Yeah, the realm. This is the realm of dunya and then barzakh and then it is going to be the hereafter. Yeah. So these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows they are lying. Yeah. And then I 101. And so when and the horn is blown, no relationship will be there among them that day, nor will they ask about one another. Meaning people are totally going to disown one another and whose scales are heavy, meaning scales of good deeds. It is they who are successful. May Allah make us of them. Amen. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the heaviest thing which will be put on a believer's scale on the day of resurrection will be his good manners. Write it down. You're going to, I'm going to improve my manners. And then, of course, we I've told you about, um, you know, words that are lighter on the tongue and heavy on the scales are subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. And then, you know, we know, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah fills the scales, Allahu Akbar fills everything between this and the sky and the earth, subhanallah is, uh, fills half of the scale. So make sure, you know, we, you are reciting subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Okay, ayah 103, but who, whosoever deeds are light, um, they are the one, those are the ones who have lost their souls, being in hell, abiding eternally. Those, okay, so this is important that, you know, lightness of scale, meaning hell. And eternally, underline the word eternally, because we cannot comprehend what is eternity. And that is why people do what they're doing, because if we had comprehended what is eternity, you're going to be living there forever and ever. And you see, when you look at people, how long can people live? How long can they live a productive life? Maybe 25 years, 30 years. The rest of the time, what are they? They are young children, then they are teenagers, they are careless teenagers, then they become all elderly people. So the time that we have is very short. And in that time, you're eating, you're drinking, you're sleeping, you're resting. So how much time do you have, really? You can calculate that yourself. So that is, we're not living in eternity now, but inshallah, in Jannah, we will. The fire will sear their faces and their, they therein will have to have small smiles. Now, sear, underline. Underline talfah. Talfah means that you know when you are grilling on barbecue and you put the meat and you sear the meat. What do you do? That it get it gets marks of the grill. Uh, that is what is going to be happening to the faces of the people. May Allah protect us. You know, in this world, how much people pay money to have their beautiful face. Do not have a scar on their face, do not have a mark on their face, not to have any any sort of, you know, uh, unevenness in, in tone or anything. How much money are people spending? And Allah is saying that their faces are going to be seared. May Allah protect us. They're going to be burnt, grilled. Uh, it will be said, we uh, were, were not my verses recited to you and you used to deny them. And they will say, our Lord, our wretchedness overcame us and we are people astray. So they're going to accept their mistakes. Our Lord remove us from it. And if we were to return to evil, we would indeed be wrongdoers. So now they are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see that? And he, he will say, remain despised therein. Do not speak to me. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not want to talk, to even talk to them. May Allah protect us from being them. Indeed, they are a party of my servants who said, our Lord, we have believed. So forgive us and have mercy on us. And you are the best of the merciful. So these, uh, so this people, this category of people, these are people who used to make dua in dunya. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, and also that you know belief alone is not enough. Yeah, sometimes you know people think only if we have said la ilaha illallah we will enter jannah. Uh, so, you know, what do we learn from this? That if we make a mistake, which we are going to make istighfar. Yeah. Sorry, I've not turned the page. 
Um, so and underline Rabbana Amanna Fulfillana Warhamna wa anta khairu rahimin. This is a another dua for istighfar. So when you're going to ask to uh, ask Allah to forgive you, you're going to uh, you're going to recite this dua. But but you took them in mockery, meaning you made fun of them and for of those who believed in me to the point that they made you forget my remembrance and used to laugh at them. Meaning, you know, um, you had a non-serious attitude about the non-serious attitude towards Quran, non-serious attitude towards the Sunnah. And as a result, what happened? You know, that made you forget remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah protect us. Indeed, I have rewarded them with this day for their patient endurance. And that they are attainers of success, meaning ones who did sabr are the ones who are going to be successful. And Allah will say, how long did you remain in the earth for a number of years? In, in, on earth in number of years, they will say we remained a day or a part of day, meaning they have spent their entire life. But compared to the Akhirah, they will feel that they have just spent a day or a half a day. And imagine we ruin our lives to, you know, for in exchange of what? Because remember, we studied yesterday as well that in the how many years uh, Allah's one year is equal to 1,000 and another place one year in, in, is equal to 50,000 human years. And what have we done? People are going to think we just spent a day or, or half a day there. Ask those who enumerate. Meaning, now we need to action point for us. If life is so short, what am I doing? Why am I being deluded? Why are, why, what is my priority? What am I thinking? Okay, he will say, you stayed not but a little, or if only you had known. Um, and then did you think that we created you uselessly and to us you would not have returned? So exalted is Allah, the sovereign, the truth. There is no deity except him, the Lord of the noble throne. Yeah. So these people, they thought, you know, Allah SWT is asking that, did you think there is no, no hellfire? There is no Jannah? And whoever invokes beside Allah another deity for which he has no proof, then his account is only with his Lord. Indeed, the disbelievers will not succeed, meaning now you're in trouble. Now you are in big trouble because, you know, you're not going to be successful. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa rahimin, And say, oh my Lord, forgive and have mercy on me and, and, and have mercy and you are the best of the merciful. So, you know, we need to make this dua as well. And, you know, we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And in Ramadan, suhu time, make sure you're using this time to make uh, istighfar because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people. The whole time is the, is the best time to ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah, we've completed Surah Al-Mu'minun. Now we're going to start Surah Al-Nur. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in our time. Surah Al-Nur is a Madini Surah. And uh, Nur means light. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Surah Anzalnaha wa Faradnaha wa Anzalna fiha ayatim bayinatil alakum tadakarun. This is a surah which we have sent down. Okay, observe the meanings. Wa Faradnaha, meaning whatever is in this in the surah has been made obligatory. So be careful and listen now, pay attention. Everything mentioned in this surah is obligatory. If you don't do it, you are, you are sinning. And we have revealed in therein, and we have revealed therein verses of clear evidence. And who has? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Why? So that you might remember. Meaning the commands in the, given in Surah Nur are, is not the word of a human being, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded it for us. And now what are the commands? In the first one, the unmarried woman or the unmarried man found guilty of sexual intercourse um, meaning outside marriage, yeah, lash each one of them with hundred lashes and do not take pity for them in the religion of Allah if you should believe in Allah and the last day and let a group of believers witness their punishment. So this is a, the punishment is called had, okay, the had for zina. So zina is having unlawful sexual intercourse. May Allah protect us. 
So, you know, what is the punishment if they are unmarried? Because if they are, if they are married and they are found in that way, then it is rajam, it is stoning to death. Okay, now, so this punishment, if the people are unmarried and they're involved in sexual intercourse, that is 100 lashes. They're going to be flogged, they're going to be whipped 100 uh, times. And that is not by someone, not by a family member, not by a brother, not by a father, not by anyone, but the Islamic State. Okay, the Islamic State is going to uh, order this punishment. And we are being told that we shouldn't take pity from for, for it. You don't say, oh, you know, it's so sad. No, 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 that's, we, we should not at all. And it, the, the punishment should be given in a place where people will be able to see it. People should be able to witness this. These are orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is that so? Why is this a stern warning? Why is there a strong, a, a, a strong punishment for it? Can you think of it? Can you think of a reason? Don't you think if people get into this, what, ha what is happening to the social relationships of people? What is happening to the physical uh, side of people? Are people, are we not hearing for people in the West? Are we not hearing the number of STDs, the sexually transmitted diseases? How many are spreading? What about the social relationships of people? Yeah, they, the harms of zina are far more. Yes, it causes a destroying in the lineage. Yes. Subhanallah. Yes. So, you know, Islam is a religion where it protects the lineage. One of the objectives of the Sharia is protecting the lineage. So you see, it is the, this is a, a grave sin which has deep repercussions in the society. The society cannot be standing up as a strong society if, if this evil is spread out. And, and how do we stay away from zina? How can people stay away from zina? Because you see, we live in an age where people, you know, whatever they desire, they get. So we need to, to reduce or, or weaken things that provoke desires. Yeah, so you, you're not going to be watching you know, all those films and you, you're not going to do anything that provokes desires. And inshallah, you will, you, you, in the next eyes that you will know. And, uh, you know, strengthen yourself with something that will prevent uh, you from acting on the desires. For example, get in the company of good people, you know, join Quran class where you're constantly reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly reminded of, you know, um, you know, there is a hereafter, and the, the, this is a sin and, you know, you know, we need to be different from cats and dogs, right? Human being, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges that there is a, a, a desire there, but, you know, you need to channel it properly. What is the difference between a cat and a dog and a human being? And honestly, the West, I see people and you just have to watch one of those, you know, the, the soaps that they have and everyone in, this, in, the, in that area has, you know, had some relationship with another person. It is all messed up. It is all messed up and it is haram because, you know, where is the father going to take responsibility then? Okay, so, and I remember in Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, zina. Do not even go near zina, let alone do zina. Yeah. And when a person is doing zina, what happens? The nur, uh, uh, the, the nur, the light of iman is taken away. The, the iman rises up like a cloud on top. Because a person who has iman is never going to do zina. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, from among the signs of the hour are the following. Religious knowledge will be taken away. Yeah. Secondly, ignorance will prevail. Yeah. People are going to become ignorant. People will not understand the Quran. People will not read the Quran. They will be ignorant about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, drinking of alcoholic drinks will become common. Yeah, alcohol will become common. To my surprise, now girls also drink. Subhanallah, I didn't know that. And fourth, there will be a prevalence of open, illegal sexual intercourse. This is the hadith I'm reading to you. So, and, and look around. I have people accepted that, oh, she has a girlfriend and he has a, she has, she, no, I, I beg you, that's another level. She has a girlfriend. Subhanallah, may Allah protect our children from that. But, you know, she has a boyfriend. He has a girlfriend. Girlfriend, boyfriend is becoming so common. Even, you know, honestly, in Muslim families, and I just look at them and I say, what are you saying? 
How can you accept it? How? You know, I personally would say to the mothers, don't care when you are going to, if you see your children are doing wrong, you don't, you stand up for what is right. You say, no, it's haram, not under my roof. I will not accept it. Yeah. And say when it is wrong, is wrong. You know, you have to stand and make noise about it because we have to be from the people who enjoy good and forbid evil. You cannot go with the flow because your son is earning a huge amount of money or your daughter is bringing the money. She's running the household. So you let it be. No, Allah is your provider. Don't worry unless your heart has is, is you know, uh, clung on to the worldly desires and you want a certain standard of living. So you let your children do whatever they want to do. No, you cannot, you know, you, you need to get away. And, you know, alhamdulillah for the people who are sitting in this class. You know, the fact that you are sitting in this class, you want to act upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the strength of character and give you the iman that when you see wrong is being done in your family, you stand up. Even if you are the only one standing up, you stand up and say it's wrong and I'm not going, I don't care. I don't care what status you have. I don't care what wealth you have. I fear Allah and I'm telling you this is wrong and I'm not in, going to be in this. I, I, I'm not going to be a part of this. Okay. And another hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even look on the day of judgment at an old man or an old woman who commits zina. Subhanallah. You see, you know, 20 years ago, if you would have said and, uh, and you know, you would have read it, you would say, how come old people are doing that? But now with social media, everything is possible. Everything. And that is why, you know, this is uh, the hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 1400 years ago. So, you know, surely this has been a trait in the people as well. So may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you know, uh, protect us from being of, the, uh, of a certain age, you know, because Zina is not limited to now teenagers and we people uh, or, or young people, even the old people can get into this. And, you know, and the fact that, you know, they're old and they don't have shy, uh, shyness and modesty among themselves, they are doing an evil action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to even look at them. And remember, zina has terrible consequences in this life and in the next. Yeah, that is why there is zero tolerance for zina in, in our religion. And the punishment is so severe. So, you know, when, when they say, oh, the sharia, the punishments are so severe, you know, uh, I'll give you an example. You know, in London, you try and drive in bus lane. A hundred pound ticket is going to be waiting at your door. Yeah. Normally, if you park on a yellow line, it's a 30 pound. Now it's gone to 60 pound ticket. Right. And that's a hundred pounds straight away. So why? To deter people. So why is it that we accept the strict laws of dunya, but when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws, we are all up saying, oh, this is such a strict religion. What nonsense are you talking? It is to deter people so that people don't, you know, the punishments are so that, you know, people understand and they stop, stop in their tracks. And, you know, the, why is it that it should be done publicly? The ones who are watching, then you dare not do it. Otherwise, you're going to be next. Okay. Then I number three, the fornicator does not marry except a female fornicator or polytheist people, meaning he should not be allowed to marry a believing chaste woman who guards her modesty, who preserves her chastity. Yeah, he should not be paired with her. None, and none marries her except a fornicator or a polytheist. And that has been made unlawful to the believers. Yeah, so, you know, if, if it is clear that someone is a Zani, you know, they are doing Zina, you know, then try not marry you know even if he has some status if he has money and he has wealth don't marry your daughters there do uh, your chaste daughter to him and you see uh, zina and shirk are, ma are mentioned together here yeah meaning either he should marry a, a someone or someone who's done the same act as him or he should marry a mushrika why because both of them are major sins okay because, you know, when a person does zina, he's doing injustice to his wife. Okay. And when someone is doing shirk, they are giving the right of Allah to someone else. So they are doing injustice. And those who accuse, accuse chaste women and, and then do not uh, produce four witnesses. Now, this is the second command. Okay. The first command was, you know, for them to be uh, lashed. The second command. Now, that is for those who accuse other, people's, other people of zina. 
Now look at this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they accuse a chaste woman and do not produce four witnesses. So you need to bring four witnesses. If you don't bring four witnesses and you start talking that this woman is having an affair and this is that, and they, they start putting names together, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, lash them with 80 lashes. Okay, they're going to get whipped 80 times and then do not accept from them testimony even after that. And those are defiantly disobedient. Underline that. Yeah. If the punishment is severe, the conditions are very strict too. Is it easy to find four witnesses? You know, when you, uh, what type of four witnesses? Four people who have seen the act being done. Okay, four people who have seen with their eyes the act being done. This is how Islam discourages, you know, that you should not be talking about people. And, you know, and the punishment, you know, the one that I said that 80 lashes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it is to be done in an Islamic state only. The Islamic judge is going to rule this punishment and the punishment is going to be done, not in the West, where there is no Islamic law, not by done by your father, not done by your brother or anyone else. Okay, except for those who repent thereafter and reform for indeed Allah is um, forgiving and merciful. You see how in our society it is so common that they dishonor a woman by saying, you know, she is this and that and they accuse her of this and that. And, and you know, they spread scandals and, you know, they ruin a person's reputation. Little do they know that it holds so, it is holds, it is a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that they are defiantly disobedient if they do that. And, you know, not only that, they should be lashed, 80 lashes, and then they test. They should never be accepted as a witness ever because they're liars. So we have to be very careful, my dears. Do not talk about people. Do not, do not say that, oh, they are an item and this and that. Do not talk about anything to do in, in which you are going to dishonor someone and, you know, dishonor their character. I number six and those who accuse their wives uh, of adultery and have no witnesses except themselves then the witness of one of them shall be four testimonies swearing by Allah and and that indeed he is of the truthful so this is now the case if a husband has seen with his own eyes his wife committing uh, you know the act then what are what is going to be done and, and now in this case you know he can't bring four witnesses can he because he's seen it with his own eyes. In that case, and this is, you know, these eyes were revealed um, for a Sahabi. His name was Hilal ibn Umayyah. And he had seen his wife do this act. Okay, so this is for an husband and wife. So what are they going to do? He is going to uh, swear by Allah, yeah, four times. And he's going to say, I swear by Allah that I have seen this act taking place. And the fifth oath will be that the curse of Allah be upon him if he should be among the liars. Okay, so he's going to stay. And this process is called li'an. So he's going to say, if I'm lying, let there be the curse of Allah upon me. So now, if he said this, so the woman is guilty and the guilt is established. But if he's making this up, now she has the right to defend herself, to maintain her innocence what is going to be done then what can she do but it i number eight it will prevent the punishment from her if she gives four testimonies swearing by allah that indeed he is of the liars okay and the fifth oath will be that the wrath of allah be upon her if he was the truthful so she can ward off and she can say you know he's lying and the wrath of allah be upon me you know upon, be upon her if she if he was the truthful um so now what happens is in such type of marriage, now they have to part ways. The, the marriage cannot continue. Okay. And if not the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy, and because Allah is accepting of repentance and wise. Meaning these commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you is from his mercy. Had he not given these commands and life would have become very, very difficult. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, you know, if people would not have parted ways, imagine living in a, in a relationship like that and how difficult it is to continue the relationship. Yeah. So then they part ways. They are no more husband and wife. If they've done li'an, they are no more husband and wife. Ayah number 11. And indeed, those who came with falsehood are a group among you. Yeah. This is now the story beginning of the incident of Ifq. 
if any sister can, you know, on sunnah.com, there is a whole detail about Aisha radila ta'ala anha and, uh, you know, just write down incident of ifq. This is the slandering of Aisha radila ta'ala anha. It is a long story, but I'm trying to make it short. But I would suggest that if you can read it yourself in depth. Yeah. So, um, you know, indeed, those who came with falsehood for our, our group among you, uh, do 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 not think it is uh, do not think it bad for you. Rather, it is good for you. For every person among them is what punishment he has earned from the sin, and he took upon himself the greater portion thereof. For him is a great punishment. Now, uh, the incident if if means lie, and this was a great lie. And this happened when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was returning from uh, the battle of um, Banu Mustalik. Okay. And, you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to draw lots. Every time he would go on a, on a, on a battle, he would um, draw lots. And then whose ever name among his wives would, would be taken out with the draw, then that wife would accompany him on that expedition. So this time it was Aisha radiya ta'ala anha. So she was... She went along with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she had a necklace and she was wearing that necklace. So, you know, the, you know, as the, you know, the expedition is returning, so they, they stopped over for some rest. And, you know, she went to the, to, to use the toilet. She went to the bathroom, she, you know, in the fireplace. And then she returned uh, from, uh, and sat, you know, they used to sit on the camel. On the camel, they used to be, you know, like in, Olden times, they, they would have like for a bride on top. So something on top as like a cover, a box type of a thing. So, um, you know, that was for her. And mind you, Aisha Radira Talanha was young and lean. So she was thin. So nobody would know, you know, what, I'll tell you why I'm telling you this. So she comes back from the, from, uh, you know, the, the toilet and she realizes that she's, you know, her necklace has fallen off. So then she goes and uh, looking for her necklace. And, um, you know, she is missing her necklace and she can't find it. But when she returns, you know, she, she sees that all the people have moved. And uh, the people who were carrying her, the, the thing that she was in and putting it on the, on the camel, they didn't realize she's not sitting because, like I said, she was thin. And, you know, her weight was, you know, in, in, she, she was not, uh, you know, something that they would feel that, you know, it's light because she was anyway light. So they didn't realize and they moved on. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, how clever she is that she's not running after looking for them. She just sat there. She sat, she sat, she stayed at the same spot, you know, thinking, you know, the moment they realize I'm not there, they'll come back looking for me. And, you know, while she was lying there, she dozed off. And then when she dozed off, there was another Sahabi. His name was Safan bin Wa'atal. Safan bin Wa'atal, his job was, you know, to come, uh, if he, he, he would come after, moment, you know, a few hours or, um, you know, uh, after the, the caravan would have passed of the believers so that he would remove the tracks so then people wouldn't know where, you know, the, the, the people have went. And then if anyone had dropped any of their, you know, precious belongings, he would, he would collect them and bring it back to the Muslims. So now he's, he sees that, you know, he sees Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now he had seen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha before the ayat of covering was revealed, ayat for hijab was revealed. So he recognizes her and immediately he says, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. At that, you know, she, because she dozed off, she just, she wakes up and she, you know, um, you know she covers herself. So, you know, what, what happened then that, you know, he asked her to sit on the camel and they walked in Medina and he brought her in Medina. He did not have no conversation, nothing at all. And, you know, when they enter Medina, uh, you know, Abdullah ibn Ubayi was a hypocrite leader and he was a staunch enemy of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He hated Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but did not show it. Okay. So what did he do when he saw them come in? He accused Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that she has committed zina with this companion. Ya Allah. And 
bear in mind he's a munafiq, he's a, a, a hypocrite. And also that, that Aisha Radilatalana said that he did not even talk to me. The only words he said was inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. That's all. So now the rumors started spreading. Now she, Aisha Radilatalana, when she reached Medina, you know, after a travel, a person gets ill. So when she's, she's ill, she's not aware of what is happening outside her house. She's ill, but she realizes and she says, I noticed that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not as affectionate towards me, you know, that I'm ill and he's, you know, um, you know, he, she said she, she found him indifferent, but, you know, she did not know why. And then what happened is that, uh, you know, she wanted to go to her, um, she asked for his permission to go to him her parents' house. And then, you know, she met her uh, father's, uh, Abu Bakr and her sister. And they were, you know, they used to, they used to go uh, to relieve themselves at night. So when she's going there, the auntie uh, stumbles on something and she curses her son, Mr. So she curses her son. She said, why are you cursing your, your son? So he, he said, don't you know what is happening? And then she told, she, the auntie tells her exactly what has happened. And hearing this, Aisha Radhi cried and she did not, you know, she, you know, she cried and you know, what the people have been saying about her. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that in, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that indeed those who came with falsehood, meaning Allah calls it a lie. And a group of, uh, uh, and a group among you do not think it is bad for you. Uh, that for every person among them is a punishment he has earned for a sin, and he would he and he who took upon himself the greater portion thereof for him is a greater punishment. Meaning, Allah is reprimanding the Muslim community that when you heard it, did it not did not the believing men and believing women think good of one another? This is an obvious falsehood. See, Allah subhanahu wa taala did her bara. Allah subhanahu wa taala said she did not do anything. And this is a slander. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling of these believing men and women that why did you, and for us an action point, if we hear anything about our brothers and sisters and you know them, do stand up and say this is a lie. You know, don't, you know, try and defend their honor because uh, uh, the Muslim's honor is meant to be defended. Why did they, did they who slandered, I-13, why did they, they who slandered not produce it uh, for it for witnesses? And when they do not produce for witnesses, then it is they in the sight of Allah who are the liars. And if, and, you know, all this has happened over a period of one month. Imagine that. And imagine also that people who say Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew and, and knew the, the unseen, how the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, you need to read the story in detail and you'll know how sad Rasulullah was and how, you know, it disturbed Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the conversation and all the rumors. So if Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew the future, how, why would he get upset? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ayah 14 says, and if it had not been the, for the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy in this world and the hereafter, you would have been touched for that lie in which you were involved by a great punishment uh, when, you received, when you received it with your tongues. Meaning, uh, you know, uh, without, without even thinking about it, what you heard, you passed it on. Meaning, and it's so important, we don't do this as well. An action point, write it down that you do, you know, don't forward messages just like that, inquire about it. And you said with your mouths of that, which you had no knowledge. So lessons, don't be a part of the rumor. Okay, think good of a Muslim person. And also it is a major sin to accuse people. Be very careful of what you say. When you received it with your tongues and said it with your mouth, that of which you had no knowledge, and you thought that it was insignificant, while in sight of Allah, it was tremendous. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a man utters a word pleasing to Allah without considering it of any, any significance for which Allah exalts his ranks in Jannah. Another man speaks a word displeasing to Allah without considering it of any importance. And for this reason, he will sink down to hell. So we need to mind our words. And why, when you heard it, did you not say, it is not for us to speak of this, exalted are you, O Allah, and O oh Allah, this is a great slander, meaning, why did you not, why did you not say, subhanallah, this is not true, hada buhtanun azim, 
you should have spoken against it. So it's for us now that when we hear any slander, we need to speak against it. Allah warns you against returning to the likes of this conduct ever if you should be believers. And Allah makes clear to you the verses and Allah is knowing and, and, and wise. Indeed, those who like that immorality should be spread among the believers will have a painful punishment in this world and the hereafter. And Allah knows and you do not know. Meaning we should not be a part of doing anything immoral in public or mentioning any um, immorality in public this is something for us to take you know for us to act upon and if it had not been for the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy and because Allah is kind and merciful oh you who have believed do you do not follow the footsteps of shaitan and whoever follows the footsteps of shaitan indeed he enjoys enjoins immorality and wrongdoing so this is fahash. Fahash is anything, whether in terms of clothing or thinking, in speech or in action or behavior. If anyone is doing indecency in, in these terms, understand that this is from the shaitan. And if it not, and if not for the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy, not one of you would have been pure ever. But Allah purifies whom he wills, and Allah is hearing and knowing. Meaning Allah forgave those who accused Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha because they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let not those who are of virtue among you and wealth uh, swear not to give aid to their relatives and the needy and the immigrants for the cause of Allah and let them pardon and overlook. Would you not like that Allah should forgive you and Allah is forgiving and merciful? You see what Abu Bakr radiya ta'ala do. Uh, you know, this, this boy, Mistah, Mistah was supported financially by Abu Bakr. Remember I told you that his mother is the one who told Aisha radiya ta'ala anha? That is a sister of Abu Bakr. So they he used to support them financially. When he heard Mista was one of them, yeah. So he, you know, he he is the one who participated in the slander. So he said, I'm not going to give any, you know, stipend, any fund. I, I'm not going to um, help him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, No, would you like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook and pardon you? Then you should continue. So then what Abu Bakr did, he doubled in, in giving and he he, you know. And, and he forgave him. Why? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him. Indeed, those who falsely, falsely accuse, chaste and unaware and believing women are cursed in this world and the hereafter and they will have a great punishment. Subhanallah, underline this ayah. And from this day onwards, none of you are going to speak anything about any, any woman. Yeah, anything about her character, you know, you know, especially when you're going out looking for brides for your son, don't make anything up about the girl. Okay, don't don't say anything about her. Just be quiet because unless you want to be cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah protect us. On, on a day when their tongues, their hands and their feet will bear witness against them as what they used to do, meaning what they used to do, for, they used to falsely accuse uh, other people. That day, uh, Allah will pay them in full of their deserved recompense and they will know that it is Allah who is the perfect injustice. Uh, evil words are, are for evil men and evil men are subjected to evil words, meaning, uh, you know, for good people, it doesn't befit them that they say bad words. Okay. And um, it, it can also be understood as evil men are for evil women and evil women are for evil men. And good words are for good men and good men are an object of good words. Uh, so those those good people are declared innocent and of what the slanderers say. Yeah. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared them innocent. For them is forgiveness and a noble provision. Uh, so for their patience uh, over the, the problems and the hurt, they... Uh, they have faced. Now from the ayah moving forwards, from ayah 27 onwards, it's going to be, we are going to be taught some manners, okay? Oh, you who have believed, do not enter houses other than your own house until you ascertain, uh, um, welcome and greet their inhabitants. That is best for you. Perhaps you will be reminded. So what are you going to do when, when you enter someone's house? Then you make sure that you uh, you know, you seek permission. I'm going to read the next ayah and then explain to you. And if you do not find anyone therein, do not enter them until permission has been given. And it is said to you, go back, then go back. It is purer for you. And Allah is knowing of what you do. Meaning, uh, you know, when you go to someone's house, knock on the door and stand on the side. Okay, this is a general 
general rule that everybody is being told why so that you don't peep in if it's a man is you know a man is knocking on the door then if there are ladies in the house maybe they've not put their hijab on so you knock and stand on the side and then tell your name introduce yourself who you are don't just say it's me okay introduce yourself just give me a moment my battery is running low just give me a moment So, um, so, you know, a person should stand on the side of the door and uh, tell their name clearly. And if permission is given, then enter. Also, if they, if someone says to you, you know, please don't come. I am, uh, you know, I'm busy. Then um, don't, uh, don't mind it. Okay. And, uh, you know, if they if, don't mind it, you know, so, you know, if if it was one of us, we would get so upset that look at her. She's telling me to go back and this and that. And don't do that. And don't even try and peep from the windows or from the, you know, the letterbox to see that, you know, I know she's in there, but she doesn't want to open the door. Understand there must be some problem. She's not opening. Don't mind it. Now you're going to do it because it is Allah's order. OK, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to do it. Then do it. Don't, don't even peep. There is no blame upon you entering houses that are not inhabited, meaning you can go to public places. No problem. You don't need to seek permission in which there is convenience for you. Um, and Allah knows what you reveal and what you conceal. Tell the believing men to, re to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts. See, the first instruction is coming for the, for the man. Yeah, that they need to lower their gaze. That is purer for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted of what you do. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, closing all doors of zina. All the doors of zina are being closed by asking the men to lower their gaze. Yeah, don't go inside someone's house without permission. If you are asked to return, then return. Yeah. You know, nowadays people in the name of fashion, husband is not home. They invite another, you know, the, their, their friends in. You cannot do that. Or, you know, or you say that she's my, you know, he's my friend's husband. So he's like a brother to me. No, he's not your brother. Your brother is your own blood brother, not anyone else. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closing all the doors that lead to zina. Now Allah is saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that guard your gaze. How? Look down. Look elsewhere. Yeah. Guard your private parts from zina. How? By not getting involved into homosexuality or into, you know, um, you know, people are doing all sorts of things like masturbation and all that, you know, people are buying all types of toys in, in relation to may Allah protect us. You know, uh, it, you know, I, I'm not going to say much. You know what I'm talking about. OK, so we need to then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the men, you need to protect yourself, lower your gaze. Yeah. Why? Uh, you know. But, uh, you know, your afira is going to be saved. How? B because you lower your gaze and you protect your power, your private parts from doing haram. You cover yourself properly. Yeah. So that is going to be, you know, uh, you're going to be increased in iman. And then tell the women, um, this, uh, tell the believing men, women to reduce some of their vision. Now, after the men, the women are being asked. Yeah. They don't look at men. You know, if even if you have a male teacher, you are listening to a lecture, don't look at them in another way. Yeah. Look at, you know, don't admiringly look at people. Just listen to their conversation. You just have a one look and then you're paying attention to what he's saying to teaching. But, you know, you know, uh, don't look at them in, uh, you know, let, let shaitan not provoke you to look, look in another way. I don't know where I heard, you know, I heard about one woman. She was, I don't know where I heard that, you know, she was looking at the chef. And then she said, she offered to the sheikh that, you know, marry me. The sheikh got so flustered over it. He just left that place. So you see how, you know, we need to hold ourselves back. Um, so even women and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, guard their private parts and they should not expose their adornment except which necessarily appears thereof. Now, this is important. Underline this, my dears, please. I number 31, that we need to 
not show our adornment except what na na appears. The Prophet ﷺ said the worst of the women are mutabarrijat. Mutabarrijat are those who, you know, display adornment. Yeah, they dress up when they go out. Why? To attract attention. And also, the hadith continues, and those who walk with pretense. Yeah, they walk in a way that they attract attention. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Nabi sallallahu said that they are munafiqat and none will enter Jannah from among them except the, for the red beet and the footed crow. Uh, and the footed crow. Meaning, you, you don't see that type of crow, do you? Uh, hardly, hardly will this type of women go to Jannah. And they should wrap a portion of their head covers over their chest. Okay, so und uh, please underline this. Uh, ayah, because you know when people ask you that where in this uh, where in the Quran it says that you need to do hijab, this is where it is. Ayah number thirty one. Okay, so you know the, your your scarf should not be like a, a, you've strangled yourself, but your a, a portion of your scarf should cover your chest as well. And do not expose their adornments except to their husbands, their fathers, and their husbands' fathers, their sons, their husbands' son meaning the stepsons, their brothers, and their brother's sons, and their sister's son, meaning their nephews, their women, we, and that which their right hand possess. But I told you, we don't have slaves anymore. It does not mean servants, be very clear. If you have people working in your house who are your servants and you've hired their, for their services, you need to cover in front of them. Or those male attendants having no, uh, no physical desire. Now, this is people, elderly people, like in their 70s and 80s, not someone who is in their 50s and 60s, okay? Except extreme old age, then yes, or children who are not aware of the private aspects of women, meaning children who don't know anything about the, the secrets of the women, but actually nowadays, even six years old are taught in the school, in sex education, they're taught everything. So you have to be careful, okay? You have to observe hijab in front of them and let not, let not stamp their feet to make known what they conceal of their adornment, meaning they should not, you know, wear, um, anklets which make noise or heels that make noise so you know then they, they they attract attention and turn to allah in repentance all of you O oh believers okay so and also you know the thing is that first we need to know the aura aura of a woman to woman uh, is navel to knee okay that is the aura that you know and um, you no one should expose between the navel to the knee and to anyone to anyone except there is a medical need, okay? Another thing that we learn is avoid eye contact with the opposite gender, okay? Another thing that we learn is don't expose your artificial or your natural beauty, whatever it is, okay? And what else? Don't dress up in a way that attracts attention. Cover your beauty, except for your spouse, except for your spouse, okay? And then hidden, hidden beauty is fragrance. You know, it's it's not allowed to apply perfume and go out for a woman, strong perfume. And, and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is any woman who wears perfume and goes out in front of non-mahram men, they will not smell the, the fragrance of Jannah. Yeah. So this woman is not going to be able to smell the fragrance of Jannah. There's always alternatives. Ha have a small perfume with you. So when you're going in a woman's gathering, then you can put it on over there. But whilst you're traveling and you're going to be traveling where there, you know, there's going to be men around, then don't do that. You're coming to the mosque. Don't make, you know, don't be someone who is showered into perfume and you pass by and the men can, can smell your fragrance. Understand that, you know, anyone who does apply this much perfume and walk out, she is getting double uh, punishment. Why? Because one, that she is disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, that the men are being attracted to her. So that man is going to lead into, you know, that man who whatever wrong he does because of his wrong thinking, uh, it, the, the, the sin is going to be on her. Okay. So, you know, I wish I could spend more time on it, but make sure that you focus on your dressing. You should not be wrapped. You should be covered. Okay. Gifts are wrapped. And but we are meant to be covered. And uh, of course, you know, there's two opinions. People say that from the, the neck to the, uh, uh, the whole body of the woman is an aura. 
okay, that she cannot show to anyone, uh, you know, and there's an, uh, other, uh, some others, they say that, yes, your face is also aura, you need to cover your face. So whatever opinion you follow, but the thing is, you are not going to do things that is going to attract the attention of the opposite gender, okay? That is what is important that you follow and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you and Allah will guide you. And I number 32, and marry the unmarried uh, among you and the righteous uh, among your male servants and female slaves. Uh, if they should be poor, Allah will enrich them for from his bounty and Allah is all encompassing and knowing. Now, listen, we got another thing, another door, how, you know, of, of zina, uh, to another door to zina, how can we close it? This is how we can do it. Marry the unmarried among you. Now, these days, people have got certain standards. You know, my daughter has to have this much qualification. My son has to have a house. The girls are now saying, I'm not going to get married to someone who does not own a house. Now, you tell me, Honestly, with a halal income, how can a 25-year-old or a 23-year-old can have a house of his own? Be it rented or be it ownership. Ah, I cannot. It is not. Uh, it is unheard of unless he's doing haram business somewhere. Then I don't know why shaitan has deluded people and parents. You know, I, I myself heard one lady saying, you know, that I am, you know, my daughter is working so she can have a dream wedding. And I knew that her daughter was seeing someone, you know, and yeah, outside, you know, when she was at work. So what is this? They are thinking of a dream wedding, but her daughter is doing haram behind her. So, you know, we need to follow Allah's orders. This is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if people are unmarried, and you know now that people, you know, we live in a hypersexualized society where, you know, people are exposed to so much content already. Then And then you ask them to do sabr. How? You put sweets in front of a child and say, don't eat it. How is that possible? So, um, uh, you, you see, um, it, it is important that we start thinking differently. You see, you, you know, there's no harm people getting married and then they can pursue their education. They can pursue their marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is saying, if they should be poor, Allah will enrich them from his bounty. And Allah is all encompassing and knowing. Yeah. Look, um, you know, even for the woman, between woman and woman, the aura, sister is asking me, what is the aura? You see, um, navel to knee is something you cannot expose at all. But you're talking about the chest, you see the sisters. Between sisters, if people are sitting and a, and a mother has to breastfeed, is she going to cover? It's okay if she, she can breastfeed in front of everyone. Do you see what I mean? But when she, between woman and woman, but when she goes out, then her whole body is out. Are you understanding? Okay, um, all right, next question, next ayah, ayah number 33. Um, but let them who find not the means for marriage abstain until Allah enriches them from his bounty. Meaning, if, if there is no means for people getting married, the unmarried people then should start fasting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enrich them. Yeah, if they have no means, they have no uh, money to get married, then that's what they should be doing. And those who seek a contract for eventual emancipation from among whom your right hands possess, meaning slave men and women, then make a contract with them if you know uh, there is within them goodness and give them from their wealth of, uh, wealth of Allah, which he has given to you. And do not compel your slave girls to prostitution if they desire chastity and to seek thereby the temporary interests of worldly life. And if somebody should compel them, indeed Allah is to them after their compulsion, forgiving and merciful. Meaning people used to have the slave girls and would ask them to do prostitution. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that no, the woman should not be forced. And uh, and if she is forced, then she is not sinful. And the person who is forcing her is fully responsible. Ayah 34, and we have certainly sent down to you distinct verses and examples from those who passed on before you and an admonition to, for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next ayat is our beautiful ayat. Believe me, a lone explanation of this should have taken two hours, but I will go through it. You have to read it yourself, my dears. Okay. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Uh, the, the example of his light. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the giver of light. And it, his attribute is also of light. 
Okay, the example of his light, meaning his guidance, the guidance he gives, and the nur of iman, yeah, he gives to his servants is like that of a niche within which is a lamp, and a lamp is within a glass, and the glass, as if it were a pearly white star lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree, neither of the neither of east nor of the west, whose oil would uh, would almost glow even if untouched by fire light upon light allah guides to his light whom he wills and allah presents an example for the people and allah is knowing of all things so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, the sifa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nur right and then light is also a guidance um, and uh, uh, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon his servants so and an example is like that of a lamp in a niche of its surround and and then what happens its surroundings are illuminated so when the light of iman enters and settles in the heart of a person it not only illuminates the heart but it you know um it continues to receive um, its supply uh, you know if the lamp continues to receive its supply then uh, you know the lamp never dies so what is it meaning a believer, a believer does not let his faith extinguish. He has a continuous flow of beneficial knowledge. He's constantly attaining beneficial knowledge so that the, the light of Iman in his heart is always a light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he guides whomsoever he, he wills. So the, the heart of the believer is, is illuminated and whereas the heart of a disbeliever is in total darkness, okay? The one who has knowledge is in light and the one who is, uh, is ignorant is in darkness, yeah? So when the nur, when the nur, which is the light, which is the guidance enters the person, it transforms the person and their actions are different. And, you know, and even around his surroundings get illuminated because of his good manners. And that can only happen with if the person is constantly seeking beneficial knowledge, is striving for the way to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. continuously taking his uh, supply, you know, which is like mentioned here, pure olive oil. So the supply of olive oil is like the beneficial knowledge that the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeks. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best of Iman. May Allah make us of those people whose hearts are enriched with Iman. And Allah guide us to the right actions. And Allah enriches us with guidance. And may not he leave us among those who are, who are misguided and who are, you know, in darkness. Um, such niches are in mosques which Allah has ordered to be raised and, and that his name be mentioned there in exalting him with, with Him within them in the morning and the evening. So who are these people? They are those people who exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and the evening in the masjid and they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are men whom neither are men whom neither commerce nor sales distract them from the remembrance of Allah and performance of prayer and giving zakah. They fear a day in which hearts and eyes will be turned out about and that Allah may reward them according to the best of what they did and increase them in his, from his bounty. And Allah gives provision to, those, to whom he wills without account. So here qualities of believers are mentioned here that you know, who are these people who have the light and uh, the light of guidance. They are those people who are not distracted from prayer. Why? Because the dunya does not occupy them. Because normally people are distracted from prayer because the world, the dunya attracts them and they have, you know, they are too occupied in dunya. Um, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a Muslim does not regularly attend the mosque to perform prayer and remember Allah, but Allah feels happy with him just as the family of one who is absent feels happy when he comes back to them. Look, subhanAllah, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy when the person is regularly coming to the mosque. May Allah allow our sons, our husbands, our brothers, our fathers, our grandparents to go to the mosque, mosque often. I mean, on the contrary, those who have those who disbelieve, their deeds will be like a mirage in a lowland, which, which a thirsty one thinks is water until when he comes to it, he finds it, it is nothing. However, he finds Allah before him and he will pay him in, his, in full his due. And Allah is swift in account, meaning anything not done for the sake of Allah 
they will have nothing, no reward in the hereafter. Their deeds are not going to be accepted, they, you know, and they will never ever enter Jannah. Ayah 40, another example is being given, or they are like darkness within an unfathomable sea which is covered by waves, upon which waves, uh, which are waves over which are clouds. Meaning there's a storm in the middle of the ocean. The, the sea is so deep and there's a storm in the middle of in the ocean and darkness is upon some of uh, some of them upon others. When one puts out his hand therein, he can hardly see it. And he to whom Allah has not granted light, for him there's going to be no light. Meaning the disbelievers are going to be in layers and layers of darkness. There is, you know, there's no iman in his heart and they, he does not have beneficial knowledge and as a result he is not have he is not guided so guidance is in, in necessary and he did not have the desire to be guided yeah if if when a person has a desire to be guided allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely guides that person then do you not see that Allah is exalted by whom whomever is within the heavens and the earth and by the birds with wings spread in flight? Meaning you see the birds, you know, when they're flying, this is the, them doing tasbih. This is how we turn. The flying birds are actually, that's their tasbih. They're glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so next time when you see the birds migrating, flying, know that they are doing the tasbih. Each of them has known uh, his means of prayer and exalting him and Allah is knowing of what they do. Okay, I wish I had time. I could have spent more time on it. Okay. Now, uh, and so now what we are going to be doing an action point is that we are going to be increasing in tasbih. If everything around us is doing tasbih, then we need to be doing tasbih as well. And to Allah belongs the dominions of the heavens and the earth and to Allah is the destination. Do you not see that Allah drives the clouds and he brings them together, then he makes in them into a mass and you see the rain emerge from it and he sends down from the sky uh, mountains of clouds within which he is hail and he strikes with it whom he wills and averts uh, it from whom he was and the flash of its lightning almost takes away the eyesight again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know showing his power he has all the power and he can do um, everything Allah alternates the night and day in indeed in that is a lesson for those who have vision Allah has created every li living creature from water and so, and of uh, and of them are those who move on their bellies and of them are those who walk on two legs and of them are those who to walk on four legs and you know there are there are creatures that walk. Uh, they have more legs uh, than we can count. Allah creates what He wills. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. Uh, so you know the question is: Allah has is so powerful. Allah is doing so much, and yet we don't do tasbih of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah al -azim. We have certainly sent down verses and Allah guides whom he wills to a straight path. But the hypocrites say, we have believed in Allah and the messenger and we obey. Then a party of them turns away after that. And those are not believers. Why? Because, you know, they keep on changing their actions and they, uh, they don't obey the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they are called... And when, and when they are called uh, of, uh, to the words of Allah and his messenger to judge between them at once, uh, and a party of them turns aside in refusal. Yeah, they don't want to, they don't want to hear the Quran. And if, if, the right, if the right is theirs, they come to him prompt in obedience. Meaning if they're going to get any benefit from it, then they come running and they say, we are Muslims. Is there a, is there a disease in their hearts or they have doubted or do they fear Allah? Will they be unjust to them? or his messenger rather it is they who are wrongdoers meaning you know why are they not why don't you obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah you know why do you feel that the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are unfair the commands are not unfair the only statement of true believers when they are called to allah and his messenger to judge between them is that they say we hear and we obey they say sami'na wa ata'na then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ulaika humul muflihun, and they are those who are successful. Why? Because they hear and they obey. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger and fears Allah and is conscious of him, it is those who are the attainers. May Allah make us of them. Amen.
So if we don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot obey him. So we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they swear by Allah their strongest oaths. If you ordered them, they would go forth in Allah's cause. Say, do not swear. Such obedience uh, is known. Indeed, Allah is acquainted of what they of, of that which you do. Meaning, you know, just show actions. Words don't hold meanings. Say, obey Allah and obey the messenger. But if you turn away, then upon him is the is only that duty with, with which he has cha charged. And upon you is that which you have been charged. And if you obey him, you will be rightly gu guided. And there is not upon the messenger except the responsibility for clear notification. Allah has promi promised those who have believed among you and done righteous deeds that he will surely grant them succession to authority upon earth just as he granted it to those before him, before them, and that he will surely establish for them there in their religion, which he has not, which he has preferred for them, and that he will surely substitute for them <clears throat> after their fear and security. For they worship me, not associating anything with me. <clears throat> but whoever disbelieves after that, then they, those are true, defiantly disobedient. Meaning, from this ayah we learn that if you want success, what are the things that you need? Underline them, please. You need to believe. You need to do good deeds. You need to do salah. Establish salah. You need to give zakah. And you need to follow sunnah. If we want success. Okay, and establish prayer and zakah and uh, give zakah and obey the messenger that you may receive mercy. Never think, never think that the disbelievers are causing failure to Allah upon earth. Their refuge will be fire and how wretched the destination. O you who have believed, let those whom your right hands possess and those who have not yet reached puberty amongst you ask permission before entering at three times. Now another uh, for society to prosper and to be healthy. This is being told, we are being given uh, commands about the, the social setup of things. So meaning children are, should not walk in, the, in their parents' bedroom without permission. And there are three times. So my dears, if you don't know, learn this. So young children, the children who have not reached the age of puberty, okay, they are not allowed to enter the parents' room unless you unless they knock. So this is something that you need to teach your children. And what are the times? Before Fajr, dawn prayer, when you put aside your clothing for rest, at noon and after the night prayer. These are the three times of privacy for you. Yeah. So you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us how that people should have modesty and people need to respect each and everyone's space okay so not only in outside the house there is modesty but inside a house as well yeah it was not befitting that you know there's a married couple there and people barge in that room yeah and which are the three times fajr yeah before fajr prayer and before you know when people sleep in the in the noon in the west that is not a concept but anyway uh, this is a Quran uh, um, that we are reading. So, you know, people do have rest in the afternoon times. And then after Isha Salah, that people should knock. The young children should be taught that don't enter mom and dad's room. Just, you know, knock, wait for a reply and then come in. Okay. There is no blame upon you. Uh, upon you nor upon beyond these three times that they continuously circulate uh, among you some of you among others meaning it's fine that they can come into your rooms other than these three times they can come and go whenever they like thus does Allah make clear to you the verses and Allah is knowing and wise and then children among you who reach puberty yeah now the ones the older children in your house then they say they let them ask permission at all times when entering the house Older children have to ask permission at all times when entering the house, okay? Or when they are entering the bedroom, they have to ask permission. As those who have, uh, as those before them have done that, meaning their oldest have also done that. And thus does Allah make clear to you his verse and Allah is knowing and, and wise. Subhanallah, you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put boundaries in the household as well. And, you know, and how do you seek permission? By saying assalamu alaikum, you say salam. So that is, so then the, you know, the people in the area know that you are present there. And women of post-menstrual post age who have no desire for marriage, uh, no desire for marriage, and there is no blame upon them for putting aside their outer garments for not displaying, but not displaying adornment. Meaning this is the condition. If the woman has become really old and she has no desire to marry, then, you know, you know, 
you know so and this woman is not someone who's going to put on makeup and put on you know nice and, and you know revealing clothes and everything then it is uh, it's okay that she can put her abaya down okay she can uh, take out take off her outer garment meaning her hijab yeah she can you can she can put aside that um, and but to to modestly refrain from that is better for them and allah is hearing and knowing and there is not upon the blind any constraint nor upon the lame constraint nor upon the ill constraint nor upon yourselves when you eat from your own houses or the houses of your fathers or the houses of your mothers or the houses of your brothers or the houses of your sisters or the house of your father's brothers and the houses of your father's sisters or the house of your mother's brothers or the house of your mother's sisters from the houses whose key you possess and from a house of your friend meaning you know where are the you know places where you can go and it's okay you can pick up food and you don't have to ask and you can eat okay because you know some people they mind it you know that what they're coming to my fridge and eating it but this is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making clear that what you know in you know what are the things that where are the people that you can go um uh, you know where you there, there's you know you're not going to be held uh, accountable of what you ate from there okay and you know the eye begins with special needs people yeah because you know people with uh, disabilities you know they are excluded from social gatherings so here quran is encouraging us that you know if they're coming somewhere they are allowed they can come and have whatever food they want there's no harm on them there is no blame upon you whether you eat it together or separately. Meaning, you know, it's okay if you don't, if there is, you know, you don't have time and you want to eat on your own, that's fine. But you, when you enter houses, give greetings of peace to each other, greeting from Allah, uh, blessed and good. And thus does Allah make clear to you the verses of ordinance that you may understand. Okay, the believers, I-62, the believers are the, are only those who believe in Allah and his messenger. And when, when they are meeting with him for a matter of common interest and do not depart until they have asked permission, meaning they just don't leave just like that. Indeed, those who ask your permission are the ones who believe in Allah and his messenger. So when they ask your permission for something of their affairs, then give them permission to whom you will among them and ask forgiveness for them all. Indeed, Allah is forgiving, meaning... You know, when people are sitting with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they should not just leave just like that. They need to ask permission. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been told that ask forgiveness. The same thing is when you're in a class, you just don't walk out. You, 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 you apologize to the teacher that, you know, I have a need and that is why I'm leaving. Do not make your calling to the messenger uh, uh, among yourselves as the call of all uh, um as the call of one of you to another, meaning don't address Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like as if you are addressing a friend. Now, uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not alive anymore, but, but it was at that time. And all, Allah, all, Allah knows those of you who slip away, concealed by others, let those be, um, beware who descend from Prophet's order, lest a fitna strike them or a painful punishment, meaning disobeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not following the sunnah, can put a person in a great trial. Okay, unquestionably, unquestionably to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Already he knows that upon which you stand and he will know the day when you will be returned to him and he will inform them of what you have done and Allah is knowing of all the things. Inshallah, we will start Surah Al-Fuqan tomorrow. Um, you know, there was so much to say. I still, you know, summarize a lot. Inshallah, some other time we will do um, a detailed tafsir of Surah Al-Nur. Inshallah, after maybe in Surah Yusuf, uh, you know, we'll see how things go. Jazakumullah khairan, my dears. We, I have taken a lot of your time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with you. May Allah forgive me uh, and accept for me the good of it. And may Allah forgive the wrongdoings. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick among us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allow us to act on the the teachings may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of uh, make us women who are covering and who are not attracting the attention may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who have the highest and the best Islamic manners may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick among us and the suffering among us may Allah ease the situation of Muslims around the world and of the sisters who are gathered here may Allah um, give pious children to the ones who don't have children may Allah give pious and righteous husbands to the sisters who are still looking to get married May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to enter Jannah and protect us from the fire. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك 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 واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته جزاك الله خير for understanding that my voice is going جزاك الله خير يلا اكسبت ات ماي ديير مي الله سبحانه وتعالى اكسبت ات جزاك الله خيرا ام وون بي تيكينج كويشنز توداي ان شاء الله tomorrow okay السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته